and welcome back to the shop. So we're starting in on our long-term project, which is getting this 13-inch salt bend I picked up back into shape. So this is going to take a while to do, and most of it, or the, the hardest part of it, is going to be cleaning, stripping the paint, and repainting. That's the boring process of it. Once you get all that done and you start putting it together, it gets awesome. But the cleaning sucks and the stripping sucks even more. So what we're going to do is we're going to kind of... I'll touch upon how we're going to clean it, what we're going to do, and uh, I'll, I'll show you what we're going to use for paint and things like that, and we'll actually skip those actual processes. But it, it, at, as far as the actual disassembly of the lathe, we'll show all those steps and how I disassemble it, and uh, we'll go from there. Now, this lathe does have some problems. I mean, we're looking at 1941 vintage. So we're, we're looking at where in our normal spots where we would expect it to see it. Plus I've had the serial cut for this pole and uh, it was sold to a school, a school district in Pennsylvania. And what's weird is the stampings on the outside of the bed usually indicate war vintage lathes. Uh, but as I said, the serial cut says this was sold to a school and it was sold to a school uh, three months before Pearl Harbor. Just about three months. It was the end of August. So... Um, now, online searching and everything else, by all indication, that, that's what these letters that are stamped on the end of the bed mean, is, is more vintage lace that were used in the war effort by the military. Uh, but there's a whole bunch of conflicting everything in there, and, uh, and I'll, I'll show those to you. So, basically what we're doing right now is we're inspecting for wear. Um, and like I said, I, I have it in the, in the spots you would expect. The, the feed screws, the, the bed does have some wear and we'll, we'll show that. Uh, I've already stripped the bed of paint uh, while it was outside and there's a few pieces left still here and there, kind of in the corners, which I just get out with a little wire brush, take two seconds. The thing that's hardest to get off of these, these old lathes is the, the filler that they use. I don't know what the hell they use, man, but that's some industrial strength filler. And, um, you know, I got it off and leveled it out as best I can, but in some spots it's just going to have to stay, but you're not going to really see it that much. So, that, that's not an issue. Now, as far as cleaning, as I said, we're going to skip the actual scrubbing, but I want to touch upon how we're going to do this. And this is the basic same way that I did it with the mill. So, you, my main degreaser is this, uh, it's not purple power, but it's the same thing. It's made by Zeps, it's industrial purple cleaner. Works great for degreasing. Uh, you can mix it and cut it with water. If you do not cut it with water, it'll tend to eat paint. Even if you do cut it with, pot, with water and leave it on, it'll tend to eat paint. Uh, anything that's uh, loose, it'll, it'll eat right off and soften the paint. So just be aware of that if you want to keep the paint job. Also, this eats aluminum. You do not want to soak anything made out of aluminum in this. You will destroy it. So just be aware of that. Also, obviously, use gloves. If it's eating aluminum, it'll eat your hands. So that will get 90% of the grease and everything off of there and also take a lot of the loose paint off. And uh, you know, you get these little scrubby, scrubby brushes, little brass and stainless steel scrubbers, um, wire brushes. They're great for getting into corners and getting out all the loose paint and loose garbage. Now what I do is I clean it with this and wipe it off and you can also rinse it with some water. I usually, well in the case of the bed I had it outside, just hose that sucker off. In the case of these smaller pots, I, I'll have... I have um, two big totes that I fill up with water. One's going to be the cleaning water, and the other one is the rinsing water. And when it gets nasty, you throw the rinsing water out. Um, by doing it that way, you just want to be sure that you can pat it dry. Uh, you may build up a little bit of flash rust, but that'll come right off with the rag before you paint it. Not a huge deal. You'll see some of that on the bed. As far as bare metal surfaces go, like uh, any of the slideways on this lathe or any um, of the hand wheels, Depending on how bad the hand wheels are, here's one here, it's all rusted and may need an evaporust treatment. May also even need, uh, depending on how pitted they are and you want to get those pits out, it may need a trip on the lathe with some sand cloth, depending on how far we go with those. But usually, a lot of the stuff will come off, especially on the slideways, on the ways and uh, the carriageways, um, the cross slide and things like that. Barkeeper's friend works awesome. So this is a powdered cleanser. So you sprinkle this on. I use green and gray scotch Bright. Wet these, stick it in water and wet these and just have at it. And this stuff will get in there and brighten everything up. 
It'll also take off all the, I usually degrease it first, but any in-ground grease and stuff, this will get off. Wipe it clean with a clean cloth. Now it's gonna leave a little bit of a film on there, and it's also gonna take away any protection on those ways, so it'll immediately rust over, especially if you have any high humidity or anything like that. It'll flash rust really quick. So to take care of that, eat a little bit of the Brasso. So this is metal polish. Put a little bit of this on, the, on a cloth, on a clean rag, wipe it down just like a car, wipe it down, let it dry to a film, and then buff it right out. That'll put a protective layer on this so that they it will not um, get that coating of just flash rust, that light, you know, really, really bright red rust. Another thing, a good thing is for all small parts, one of these little sonic cleaners from Harbor Freight. Um, I think they're like 70 bucks, but obviously 20% coupon, you can catch them on all kinds of deals. Work great for smaller parts. Drop them in there with some purple power, turn the suckers on, you'll be amazed at what it takes off. Again, if you're using the purple stuff, be aware of aluminum and even brass. It can kind of turn that brass, that brass, that coppery color. For stripper, there's all kinds of strippers out there and they all work well. And it depends on what you want. Citrus, citrus strip is really, really good. I just personally don't like the smell. There's also Peel Away 6, works very well, less of a smell. Um, I just tried to try this stuff. Uh, multi-strip, see how it works, and it works perfectly fine. Uh, it's kind of a, a gel. You know, uh, you can stick your finger in it and your finger isn't really wet. Worked real well. You paint it on there, uh, on, on whatever you want to strip off, and let it sit. You put a really decent film on there, let it sit for about 24 hours, and you take a putty knife, and you can scrape most of the, the loose stuff off and then rinse the rest off. And also, in combined with your little brushes here, it'll take most of it off. This bed took two coats to get, uh, I believe there were three or four coats of paint on there. And it took uh, two outings of the stripper to get 99% off of, uh, of that. And again, this is taking the paint off. You are using water to rinse it off. You will get some flash rust. Um, just before you paint, all you do is just take a little wire brush, boom, 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 that comes right off, tack rag, and you're good for paint. So let's go take a look at this bed and see what it looks like now, and then I'm going to clean the ways and we're going to inspect uh, a couple of problem areas that we have there. Okay, so most of this ingrained rust here, this darker stuff was there when I got it. The lighter stuff is the flash rust from me cleaning it like up into the headstock area. But as you can see, it's a nice white rag. You can see it comes right off. Now, this is a six foot bed, and we got 99% of the paint off of here. The only place we have a little bit left is kind of in here, and right in the corner. That'll come off uh, very easily with just a little wire wheel, two seconds. We'll buzz that right off before we start painting. What I want to do now is I want to get these ways nice and shiny. This is an unhardened bed, so I know there's a lot, there's a wear. And pretty much from, from right about here, actually even further back. So right about here to here, which is where the headstock sits, I can catch a nail on this inside edge. Not on the outside. Outside is fine. This inside is fine. This is where the tailstock rides. But just this front one, which is kind of weird to me, because usually when I see wear, it's on the outer edge of this, not the inside. And when I fit the carriage there and flipped over the, let me actually grab it. And I've showed this on the other video. You can see some scoring here. So I think we had some contamination under the ways which kind of ground into this. And that's where our wear came from. Also, these way wipers were actually digging into this side of the bed because they're dented. So, God only knows how long it was done for that, what we have to wear. And we're just going to have to put it together and see what we got, you know. Uh, I was expecting wear, but we'll just have to see what we come up with once we get this all together. And again, I mean, it looks like a good candidate for a good grind and re-scraping, um, but... Like I said, that's just out of my price range at the moment. And for this being a school day, we also have 
chuck marks. So from dropping the chuck from right here to here, we have some denties here and dents here. Not really that much of an issue, it's just more of an aesthetic thing. So let me get this really cleaned up. We'll take a closer look and see what we got going on on these ridges. Okay, so about five minutes worth of, five or ten minutes worth of scrubbing. Um, and we got it looking like this so far. Now, it's not completely clean. I'm not worried about it getting 100% clean and shiny right now. What I want to do mainly is just inspect and see what we have in this area. So let me see if I can zoom you in really good and uh, show you some of the damage I was talking about. Okay, so we're right in the middle of the worst of it here, and you can see right here we have a wear ridge, so everything below this has missing metal. Again, I don't know how bad it is. You can see the tops of the waves are a little dingified. The opposite side here isn't nearly as bad as this, though. This side here is fine. It's just this one inside corner. I don't understand why it's only that one side. Now, as far as the rest of it goes, this other side here is fine. I mean, I'm not catching a ridge. There's some, you know, scrapes and, and gouges in here a little bit in, you know, in a few spots, but nothing, nothing that catches. It's just this one spot that catches. Now, on this side here, There's a gouge from about here to about here. And that was probably from the stuff stuck under the bed. Now it's just a line, it's like a scratch right in it. Uh, I'm not too worried about that, I'm more worried about that lip. You get a dingified from pretty much here to here on the inside ways from dropping the chuck. You got one decent ding right here um, doesn't feel proud though but it's definitely a good chip but other our problem area is that general area and we'll see how much that affects it once we get this all together okay so here are the extra tags we're down at the end of the bed here is a serial number which dates this to 1941 and here are the extra two stamps you have DWW here and JAN here now I always thought when you saw the DWW that meant that it was a war lathe. That was a Department of Defense, some sort of inventory tag. And the JAN you usually see accompanied by an anchor, and that meant Joint Army Navy. But this shipped to a school three months before the war started. And there are so many conflicting ideas as to what these extra tags mean, and only some lathes have them on there, not all of them. So uh not quite sure. Okay, so that was kind of the where I wanted to show you guys, and obviously let me know what you think in the comments. Um, my, my plan for the time being is to put it together and see what happens, and, and just go from there. Like I said, it would probably be a good candidate for it to be reground and re-scraped, but that's just not in the cards at the moment, so we're going to clean this up, get it all looking nice, we'll put it back together again, and see what we got. I don't think it'll be that m much of an issue. I think it'll be an issue, but I don't think it'll be huge. I'm not planning on turning, you know, huge long shafts, but I think that'll be a good test of a worn bed, and, and we can see if we can counteract some of that or, um, you know, see what we can do. So anyway, you guys, let me know what you think in the comments, but for, for, for the time being, what we're going to do is we're going to start on the smaller bits. So it's pouring rain outside. We're getting the remnants of the hurricane. So it is absolutely downpouring outside, so there's no bringing the heavy stuff outside to strip. What, what I'll do is I'll start with the smaller stuff here, and I can start putting some stuff in the sonic cleaner here. So what we'll probably do is I'll get out the apron, and we'll start cleaning that up. and Because that has a fair amount of little bits that need to be taken apart. So we'll get on that, set you up on the table, and... Start seeing what that apron's made out of. Okay, just so you guys get a little bit of idea of scale of what we're dealing with. Here's the apron in the carriage of the 9-inch lathe. And there's the apron in the, the apron only of the 13-inch. 
So, you need a little bit of a size difference there. Okay, if you're doing any salt bend, or any older lathe, you're going to want to make sure you have a, a good set of uh, long and short punches. This is going to be taper pins and straight pins holding a lot of this stuff on, and sometimes taper pins can be a bitch. So what we're doing right now is taking off all the stuff that can be damaged when we're flopping this around. So we're going to be taking off hand wheel, lever, lever, these two gets oils, and this one here. So now a pin holds this on, a pin holds this on, and a pin holds this on. So we're going to try to get those loose. Um, I think this is a straight pin. I don't think this is a taper pin. And these two are taper pins. This one looks like it gets driven out this way, and this one looks like it gets driven out this way. Be sure if, to check both ends of it and see which side is widest and drive from the opposite end. So, I've already cleared the paint off of these. We're going to put it in gear here. I think our clutch is working either. Okay, never mind. Let's see if we can punch this one out. Alright, that one don't want to cooperate. This way, I think. Uh, none of them want to cooperate. Here we, go. we need bigger hammer. I can get better lighting over here. Uh, yeah, let me just work on driving these suckers out. I'll see if we can rig up some better lighting, and we'll look at the rest of it. Okay, we got a little bit more light on the subject here, and um, this one is not coming off. So this is going to have to be either heated up and tried, or um, drilled out. Now I want to get everything else out of here before I try that because there's a lot, I've been finding a ton of uh, wood chips in here. So I don't want to put any heat into here until we get everything cleaned up uh, or you know all the big chunks of wood and stuff out of there. Also if I'm, gonna, if I'm gonna have to drill this out, I want to get this gear out so I have a nice flat surface to be able to put it in the mill. So this pin is out, this pin is out, there was a, an oiler down here that was screwed in and one up here and one up here that was press fit so here's the one that went up here now that long tube goes to an oil gallery right here on the top of the half nuts did find one problem with the half nuts they look in pretty good shape but if I can get the light in here good piece of it is chipped out right here now it's not going to be that much of an issue, it's just the corner there and it's a half nut that clamps 
straight down. So we shouldn't have an issue with that. I also found that um, I don't know what that is, but <laughs> I also found that the clutch mechanism here doesn't work. It won't tighten down, but this nut here is spinning, so I'm pretty sure that's why. But okay, so now before we get into this, take these handles off, I just want to show you how the power feeds work. So middle is neutral, which basically turns this hand wheel, which turns a gear, which then engages another gear that rides in your rack and drives a carriage. Now in the up position here, which is power feed, power longitudinal feed, what happens is, is in here there's a worm gear, okay, that, and your shaft runs right through the middle. On your shaft is a keyway. As it spins, it turns this gear, you engage, you tighten down that star wheel which engages a clutch. That then turns a gear internally here and then moves your carriage along with this pinion gear. Now in the other direction, which is power cross feed, okay, what happens is, is that gear then flips up and engages this gear, which engages a gear that is on the uh, cross feed screw, which then feeds your carriage in for a facing cut. And that's how the gearing in here works. Now, there's also a lockout mechanism so that you cannot have your feeds engaged and try to engage your half nuts. Your, ha your lever selector has to be in neutral, then your half nuts can close. So, let's go ahead and get these hand wheels here off. Um, let me grab my brass hammer. <laughs> even easier. One wheel off. Now this lever should come off. It's gonna get started. Okay, there it is. All right. So this pinion shaft here, that's connected to our hand wheel, comes right out. Not a lot of wear on there. A lot of times you'll get wear right here, which may may make it uh, a little jiggly in the hole, and you may have to put a bush in here, but this is in good shape. So now we're going to take off this oil sump, and there's what, one, two, three, four, five flathead screws on the bottom here. So let me get a flathead for those. Okay. So this holds the oil bath in your apron. And there's a gasket behind this. Which if you get the kit, you'll get a new one. Okay. Yeah, so you can see in here, you can see all that sawdust, but somebody was turning wood with this. 
in here you can see the worm gear. So this spins like this from your lead screw, which engages this. Now inside here is your clutch. By tightening that star wheel, it pulls in on the clutch and locks this gear in place and starts your drive mechanism on these gears. That's what's not working, but I think it's just a loose um, nut here. In other words, this isn't pulling in, but as you can see, everything in there moves nice. Okay, there's a set screw right up in here that we're going to take out. It's right in here. Remove this set screw, and as you can see, here's the gasket. So, we got a new one in the case here. So, we're moving this set screw right here in the crossfeed gear. And there should be a dowel pin. There's a dowel pin right there, right on this gear that we got to get out. So, um, I need to get something to wedge that gear so that when we hit it, you can see, I mean, something to point, you can see the pins right here, right there. So we got to get that out. So I got to get something to wedge in here to stop the gears but not break the gears. Okay, so I got a piece of wood in here to stop the gear. Take an appropriate size punch. It's a little too big. Got it started. I got your small punch. Okay, that's out. Drive this shaft out. Okay, so there's the shaft that that gear rode on. Here's the gear itself. And you can see the way they did it, they pinned it. Those two pieces pin together that's a wick these here are all wicks by the oil feed system okay so we're going to take out the half nuts that are held in by this dovetailed wedge these three bolts here
Okay. Should be mounted on dowel pins. There's one here. Top one's off. Let's go get this bottom one here off. There we go. So there's two dowel pins that's mounted on. These actually look not too bad. I mean, we got somewhere on them, but that's not bad at all. Yeah, same thing with this one. You can see here's the oil hole. And this is why when you get an old lathe, you kind of want to go through it at least. You don't necessarily have to paint it, but you definitely want to go through it. Because this is an oil hole to your half nuts. And... It was clogged with all that. Okay, so this, here's the one that's chipped out. You can see the break right there. Again, it, actually, you know what? That might not even be a break. That looks ground. See, that looks ground, like somebody ground that off. So that actually might be clearance. That might be clearance for getting by something, or getting by the bolt. Or if it did, or if it did break off, it broke off a long time ago, but that's ground. Yeah, so I'm not worried about that. In here, you can see this right here. This is your lockout plunger, okay? So this is what prevents you from engaging the half nuts with the feeds engaged. Okay, now for the fun part. I'm going to take out this worm gear. <laughs> 